What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Here we are with another reaction video and in this one we have Australian laws. 14 surprising things that are forbidden in Australia. Now before we jump into these 14 things, if you guys happen to enjoy this, please don't forget to subscribe, get a video a thumbs up. And let's look at what wacky laws are in Australia. I know every country has them and I've even reacted to a couple in Australia. I've reacted to a video. But this one might have different ones that I'm like, where in the world did that law come from? Let's dive in and find out. In this video, we're going to talk about strange Australian laws and surprising things that are forbidden or illegal in this country that Let's may surprise you depending on where you're from. So if you're planning to move to Australia or you're new to this country, I highly recommend watching this video so you're aware of what you're not legally allowed to do. So if you're interested, keep watching. The first law that really surprised me the first time I heard about it is that it's actually illegal to be in possession of more than 50 kilograms of potatoes. I heard According about to this. my research, in Western Australia, it is against the law to possess more than 50 kilograms of potatoes unless you're a commercial seller. And apparently this law dates back to the 1940s when there were concerns yeah. about protecting local potato growers. And if they catch you holding more than 50 kilograms of potatoes, you can actually get fined up to to 2,000 Australian dollars. And not only this, in addition to the fines, they're also going to charge you up to twice the value of the potatoes. This is a crazy law. If you have a bit more knowledge about this, or if you want to tell us about the history of this, please leave a comment below. It's interesting. I have never yes. heard of a country actually having laws around holding potatoes. The second law in our At the end of the day, they say, ain't no reason you should have more than 50 kilograms of potatoes. Ain't no reason, unless you're selling these potatoes, unless you're a commercial seller, if we catch you with these potatoes, you're not only going to pay this $2,000 fine, but we're going to also make you pay double of what the potatoes are actually worth because you're going to learn your potato lessons today. That's So that's what the Australian law was like when this when this law was made. Y'all <laughs> drop in the comment section. I know y'all know the reason for this law. Pets. is driving with a pet in your lap. And of course, this makes sense, right? Because yes. it is potentially harmful for the animal. It's dangerous for yeah. yourself as well because it can block your view. If you stop, Facts. suddenly the animal will fly through the windshield. Of course, yes. it does make sense, but it is interesting that it's actually a law. So if you have a pet, make sure that you don't have them on your lap. I'm not sure what other countries have this, probably many, but yeah, it's just yeah. surprising. And you may want to know that breaking this law can actually get you a fine of up to 200 Australian dollars plus a few demerit points. So be very careful if you have a pet, don't put it in your lap. It can cause you a lot of trouble. Another law that really Yeah, I, I completely agree with that law. Uh, I mean, you should know better. It should be common sense, but common sense ain't so common. Yeah, why would you drive with a pet in your lap? Like she said, it could fly through the windshield. If you stop abruptly, it could jump out the window, could freaking block you from being able to make a driving move that you need to make in order to avoid a crash or whatever you need to do. Driving with a pet in your lap is just not smart. It really surprised me is the fact that it is illegal to offer a reward no questions asked for the return of stolen property so basically really? if you lost a pet again or if you lost something it is illegal for you to say please return the object or the pet back and i'll give you a reward or i'll pay you something or i won't ask any questions about it because this basically means that you are letting someone to get away with something or you're letting a thief off the hook and based on my research, Dang. this law is mainly in South Australia and Tasmania. I'm not sure about other states. Let me know in the comments below if you know more about this. And also the fines can go up to 500 Australian dollars. Dang. So be careful if you lose something or if you are trying to get something back when you are advertising this because you can get in a lot of trouble. Hey, I can't okay, be asked for my stuff back. No questions asked. I don't care if you stole it, what you did. I need you to bring it back. I need you to bring my pet back. I need you... That one is kind of strange to me. I understand it. I understand it because people could just go and steal something. And then you put your loss. No questions asked. They bring it back. They got to give you the money. I understand what's the, the concept of it. But that is strange that that's a law. 
really, really surprised me is the fact that you can't set off fireworks on your own. It is forbidden to actually have private displays of fireworks oh, and the fines yeah. can go up to 50,000 Australian dollars. The only people who are exempt from this law are licensed pyrotechnicians. So for mm -hmm. example, if in New Year's Eve you want to set off your own fireworks, that's forbidden. And this really surprised me because in my country, everyone gets fireworks and you can do it in your home. So yeah, it's very interesting. There is one exception. I think it is in the Northern Territory. Fireworks are only allowed to be sold and set off on Territory Day, which takes place on the 1st of July. So I think this is the only state and the only period where people are actually allowed to set off their own fireworks. Otherwise, don't do it. You're going to get in a lot of trouble. And if you are from another country, let me know what are the laws around fireworks um, there. Another law that's- Yeah, that's one not, that was not so weird to me due to the fact that in America, I think like you have to have a certain amount of land or something like that to be able to set off fireworks. Although people are going to do it illegally all the time. Like 4th of July, people are going to set off fire. But you're supposed to like uh, have a certain amount of land. I believe. I could be completely wrong. Uh, so you can't do it like if you're in like a neighborhood where there's a lot of houses and stuff around. You can't do that. If you're in apartments, you can't set off fireworks. Obviously outside, you can't. You have to have a certain amount of land or... I think that's the law. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But that was not a weird law to me. That makes sense safety for safety reasons. Surprise me, but it does make sense. Is the fact that it's actually forbidden to sing or sing songs in public or even swear in public. Really? And of course, yeah. it does make sense. No one likes someone insulting on the street or in public. But I don't think it is illegal in my country. Perhaps it should nah. be, but it is interesting that this is actually an offense and you can get yeah. fined for doing so. And another funny thing within this law is that streaking across a sporting field or in a sports event is also considered an offense. It can also be singing in a root song or a song that has insulting language. I don't know if this really? is actually applied because I've seen perhaps strikes or protests on the street and perhaps people swearing, etc. And nothing happens. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure how it works in that sense. But yeah, if you have more information, leave a comment below. I don't know if it's a law that surprises you. Yeah, let me know. Another law. It does surprise me that like you can't swear. Not that I don't, I don't like swearing either. But it's, I don't have a problem with other people doing it. So it's surprising that that's actually a law that says you cannot do that in public or obscene songs or that's, that's got to, I'm sure, is that one real? Y'all talk to me in the comment section because I feel like Australians swear more than Americans. So how can that be for real? that may surprise you or not is the fact that in many Australian states it's actually forbidden to eat or drink while you're driving and when I say drink it's like even drinking a bottle of water while mm. driving the underlying really? reason for this is that this law is trying to prevent distractions basically people getting yeah. distracted when they're behind the wheel and apparently the fines for doing this can go up to 300 Australian dollars so next time you're driving make sure that you're not eating anything just to not get in trouble another law in this list I understand stay in the safety reasons but hey sometimes you gotta eat on the go you gotta eat while driving i get some mcdonald's i'll give me a burger i could eat and drive no problem so i understand for safety reasons but i don't agree with that law i don't this agree with really it. surprise you it's the fact that it is illegal to disrupt a wedding or a funeral apparently this law is mainly in south australia so if you were thinking of disrupting a wedding or a funeral for whatever reason something that it is crazy to think think twice because you may get fined up to ten thousand australian dollars or even two years of imprisonment this is oh crazy the fact that God. there is a law about that yeah it's just a crazy law but i guess it makes sense yes. i don't know let me know in the comments below another surprise so it, it ain't no moment where you can speak now or forever hold your peace is hey you better not speak at all no interruptions or you're going to jail. Australian law is that it is forbidden to publish fake news. This I like that. Is specifically Thank you. in the state of Queensland. So basically, this law states that it is forbidden for a person to publish any advertisement on the television, radio, or on the internet 
fake news that state that a child has been born when they haven't, or a person who is still living has died, or advertising a funeral for someone who mm. is still living, <laughs> or that a particular couple is getting married when they're not. And you can actually get up to six months of jail if you do this. I don't know who would do that. It's weird. It may happen, yeah. I guess, if it's in the law. Let me know if in the comments if you have any anything to say about this. It's interesting. Another fake news should be against the law. Presenting fake news should absolutely be against the law. It'll get people to only present truthful news and we will only have the truth out here. I agree with that one. The law that really surprised me, but when I think about it, it does make sense, is the fact mm. that solariums or tanning beds here in Australia are forbidden. And this law, oh. I think, came into effect in 2015. And this is basically because tanning beds actually increase the likelihood of getting skin cancer, especially if already Australians yeah. are exposed to high UV exactly. levels. So it does make sense, although I yeah. do think it's still allowed for private use. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's interesting. In my country, tanning beds, from what I remember, they're still allowed. If you're from a different country, let us know what's the case. Yeah, it's interesting and I was actually very yeah. surprised by the fact that yeah, tanning beds are not, are not allowed here in Australia. Another law. That makes sense, but if you're in Australia, just go outside, get you a little lawn chair, whatever you gotta get, and just cook in the sun. Just get out there for a couple minutes, you're gonna be tan. You don't need the tanning bed. Get out there in the sun a couple minutes, you're gonna be tanned. That's very surprising, and I've mentioned this in other videos, is the fact that you can get very hefty fines for putting your feet on public transport seats. And again, really? I do think that this is common sense. It's not polite yeah. to put your dirty feet I on do the agree public with transport that. seat where other people are going to sit. But it did surprise me because I hadn't seen in other parts of the world this being something that's an offense and where you no. can actually get fined for it. And if you're wondering, these fines can go up to 288 Australian dollars. So yeah, be careful about it. I know many people, perhaps they are tired and they do it unintentionally. And I've actually seen it happening. I've seen people put in the feet and the inspector coming and actually trying to find them. It, it's interesting. Another thing that really surprised That's, I understand it's rude. Completely agree that it's rude. But to get a fine for it, it'd be against the law. Dang! Really? It's, me. it's the fact that it's forbidden to fish without a license. Of course, as I said before, oh, okay. this will vary according to the state where you are living in. So make sure you read the laws first. But for example, in New South Wales or in Victoria, you do need a license for recreational fishing or to pay a fee. And if you don't pay this fee, basically this is considered an offense. And in specific areas, depending on where you're fishing, there are also limits in terms of the amount of fish that you can take, for example. Yeah. It's very, very interesting. And apparently the purpose of these laws or these rules is for conservation and maintaining the overall health of Australia's aquatic ecosystems. So I yeah, it's that. very interesting because in my country, I don't think you need a license for recreational fishing. At least when I was a kid, I would go with my dad yeah. fishing and I don't think he needed a license for doing that. So yeah, it's interesting, but I do think that it does make a lot of sense. And yeah, another thing that really surprised yeah, me. Yeah, I think here, uh... Hey, there's just a lot of places that you have a, have to have a license to be able to fish at. Uh, but a lot of people fish without licenses all the time. But I think it's just certain places that you can't fish at without a license or paying a fee or something. It's me, and I really like this law, is everything that relates to noise violations. Again, this will vary according to the state where you're living in. But for example, here in the state of Victoria, we have the Environment Protection Act, which states that it is an offense to make excessive noise in specific time periods. So for example, before 10 a.m. or after 10 p.m., you can't use your vacuum cleaner or you can't turn that makes the sense. aircon on or you can't use power tools. What, what do you mean you can't turn the aircon on? Vacuum cleaner makes sense. But after 10 p.m. is when I need my air conditioning the most. I needed to be able to fall asleep. It's staying on. It got to. How loud is the air cons out there? How the hell? 
cleaner or you can turn the aircon on or you can to use power tools so yeah uh, that makes interesting sense interesting because again i don't think that's the case in my country and uh, let me know if it's common in yours and i guess i love it because it kind of shows the culture of respect for yeah. others your neighbors yeah it's something that i do appreciate a lot another law yeah, i don't think this is a law in ours i think maybe like if you enter like a hoa live in an area with the HOA, you might have these rules presented to you where you have to follow them. But as a law, um, no, I don't think it's a law. Like when it comes, I mean, there are noise violations, like you partying, going crazy, obviously uh, that, but using a vacuum cleaner or air conditioning or power tools, I don't think you're gonna get fined for that or that it's against the law. Oh, or offense that caught my attention is the fact that it is forbidden to have your dog unleashed in public areas. So that basically makes sense if you're to me. walking your dog down the street or you go to a park, you can only have him off leash in specific designated areas. So that makes sense you may come to me. across, and this is very common here in Australia, dedicated dog parks. In these instances you can get your you can have your dog off leash, but otherwise you do have to put a lead on your dog. And the reason for this, of course, again it's common sense I guess, is that if you have a dog off leash, they may attack other dogs or even native exactly. species as well. So basically it's a measure that tries to protect again the environment where we're living and our ecosystems etc so if you exactly have a when you're here in australia highly recommend following the rules depending on the state where you're living in another that law just that makes sense me relates that just makes to sense. drinking alcohol on the beach and this no, is because most beaches it. here in australia are actually alcohol free songs meaning that you can get in real trouble if oh, you are wow. at the beach drinking a bottle of wine and a cop catches you doing so again these laws will vary according to the state where you're living in or even your local council so i highly recommend reading the signs at the beach so you're aware of what you're allowed to do and what you are not allowed to do yeah. for example according to my research it is an offense in western australia for people of any age to drink alcohol in public and this includes the street the park or the beach you can Absolutely. actually get fined up to 200 australian dollars so again be mindful of this and be aware of the laws in your area so yeah these are all yeah. the Australian laws that really surprised me when I heard of them because many of the things are perhaps a bit unusual but when you yeah. think about it they do make a lot of sense yeah it's interesting yeah and I hope you enjoyed this video if you liked it please like and subscribe to keep supporting the channel so I can keep bringing more content for you I'll see you next time bye uh, I think that just makes complete sense um uh, not that I'm, 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 I'm sure that law probably gets broken a lot I'm sure there are plenty of people that drink on the beach or drink out in public Maybe just do a little bit better job of hiding it. I know in America, like in public, you can't really drink. And I don't know if you can or not at the beach. I don't know. But like we have spring breaks. So college students are literally going to all kinds of beaches and literally just drinking nonstop. So uh, all kinds of laws are getting broken. So I'm, I'm sure it might be a law, but I'm sure that one just gets broken a lot. I'll guarantee it. Uh, but if you guys happen to enjoy that, or you know of any other weird laws, any strange laws, drop them in the comment section. I'm intrigued. Uh, let me know which one of these on this list that you thought was the strangest. Uh, I probably thought like swearing in public was probably the strangest to me. Um, that's just very different. I guess, but I grew up here in America where you can almost say what you want. Don't mean you ain't gonna face consequences. It just ain't against the law. Uh, but please don't forget to subscribe, get a video, a thumbs up, and check out that next one. I'll see you guys next time.